Hey guys, Steve here. You are listening to one of our original 26 episodes. If you've listened to any of our new episodes, you're going to notice that we're sounding a little different in these ones. Yeah, there's a reason for that. There is. They've been remastered. They have been remastered. Because they had a really annoying hum. Yeah, I mean, a huge thanks to uh, listener James for doing almost all of the legwork on this yes, thing. Yeah. You'll also notice if you had listened to what we're calling the Lost 26 episodes before, and you're re-listening now, the music and sound effects are gone. Yes, yeah. we've, we've gone back to straight audio. So, be warned, we sound a little different today than we do in what you're about to listen to. Yeah. Enjoy. Uh-huh. Bye. Okay, bye. Thinking Sideways. I don't understand. Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Thanks for coming back. I'm Steve. I'm Devin. And I'm Joe. And we're going to give you a new story today. Mm. A story about a murder most foul. Our story begins, or ends, if you want to look at it that way, on June 30th of 1999. It, the body of Ricky McCormick was found face down in a cornfield about 20 miles from his home in St. Louis, Missouri. Ricky had officially been missing for three days, though his family said they hadn't seen him in five. But when his body was found, it was in a pretty extreme state of decomposition to the point that the fingers on his hands were falling off. Oh. Wow, that's more than five days worth, I think. Uh, well, yeah. Wait, where was it? It was St. Louis, Missouri. It was, and it was in the summer? It was in the summer. Okay, it could have been. Maybe. It's pretty humid back there. But yeah. uh, how old was Ricky, by the way? Uh, Ricky was 41. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And he wasn't in the primest of health. Yeah. He wasn't a healthy guy. Okay. But obviously, they find him, and he's pretty well decomposing. Which made it very difficult for an autopsy. The county coroner or pathologist, whichever it is, decided that they would go ahead and do and do their best on his 72-pound body, or the 72 pounds that remained, uh, and mm. see what they could find. In the report, the pathologist eventually said that the cause of death was undetermined. They hmm. couldn't figure out why he died. So it wasn't anything obvious, like a giant bullet hole or something. Correct. No obvious sign of death, or cause of death, excuse me. Maybe he just ate a little too much corn. He might have. (laughs) Sat in the sun, it popped in his stomach. Yeah, that's Uh, it. Uh That'd be why he decomposed so fast, too. So that is the beginning, Mm -hmm. and then the mysteries begin. Okay. The first of which is nobody knows how Ricky got there. He didn't own a car. He's 20 miles away from where he lived in a cornfield, basically in a rural area, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how he got there. Though the police investigated, no killer was ever identified because there was never any solid leads in the case. There just weren't any clues, and the trail went completely cold. Uh, So uh, the the cornfield, was it like uh, a fully, like a a really developed cornfield with like six foot high corn stalks and all that, or that kind of cornfield? I think it was next to a cornfield or just on the edge of, because it was right off the road. Oh, okay. So so it wasn't the farmer that found him. It was just somebody like just drove by and threw the body out, that kind of thing? Well, probably. Yeah, we're guessing that's what happened with the body. We don't know. Uh, If I remember the details correct, a motorist found him. Okay. Uh, but that's all that I can glean from exactly how he was found. The other details in this story take precedence, and so those little details seem to get left behind and uh-huh. are hard to find. Yeah. Does anybody have any idea why we're talking about this? It's, a, it's got corn in it. I mean, anything <laughs> with corn in it is cool. Uh, that is not it. No? Oh, okay. The reason that we're talking about this is that 12 years after he was murdered, the FBI began to release information about the case what? and turn to the public to ask for help. Okay. The FBI, the knowers of all, plausible deniability, don't know the answer to this case. Huh. Mm. Here's what the problem is. Okay. When they found his body and they searched his pockets and they went through all of his belongings, the only thing they found on him were two notes in his pockets 
that contained over 30 lines of ciphered text, encoded oh. text. They've been working on it for 12 years. This is considered one of their top cases because it's so mysterious for them that they eventually turned around and they asked the public for help. Wow. The FBI actually went ahead and set up a page on their website, initially asking for information, but it got so much traffic. Now they actually have a dedicated site or dedicated page on their site where it has the copies of the notes and you can go ahead and download them and read them and try to figure it out yourself. But let's, we're getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. Let's step back a little and let's talk about Ricky because... Sure. He wasn't the best guy in the world, and I'd like to, to give a little bit of history on him because that might help shed some light on this these weird notes, which then we'll go into. Okay. He had spent some time in prison well, for... Well, he lived in St. Louis, didn't he? He did. Uh, he'd spent yeah, some time in prison for sex abuse. Evidently, he'd fathered four children with three or four different women, though he never really was evidently involved with their lives, the children's or the women's, after impregnation. Uh, uh, of one course. of those ladies was actually 14 when the child was conceived. Uh -huh. uh, he was an adult. What a classy uh, guy. Yeah. yeah. He went from being homeless to living at his mom's. He could barely hold down a job. He wasn't the highest on the social ladder. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I preface this with, this is a quote, this is directly what was said, is that his mother referred to him as retarded. Hmm. Ah. Not the sharpest stick, evidently. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, his family, so, however, did like to say that he was street smart, mm. but they agreed that he was troubled. Mm. So not a, not a guy that's really going to be able to compose an unbreakable cipher, huh? You would no. think. Yeah. I feel like that's exactly the kind of person. Who he might have been a savant. If this possible, yeah. Well, people who aren't thinking totally clearly often make mistakes in their ciphers, making making them really indecipherable, right? I mean, yeah. that's the. That's true. That that's is a the good big point. problem with disturbed minds. Mm -hmm. Well, and it can it can also be too that what the, the cipher was it letters numbers combination of both both, both yeah. letters and numbers it was both both uh, it could have, you know it's it's entirely possible that it's not even a ciphered message at all well and, that and he there, was there, just, we'll get yeah. into that because there is that possibility and and you Devin bring up a good point is maybe it's he makes it harder <laughs> because of his mental state right. uh, he could barely read or write or he was very poor at it mm -hmm. his handwriting which I'll bring up the notes here in a minute and you guys can take a look at them but his handwriting is very, very poor. It's very difficult to read. But he supposedly, and there's some conjecture on this, supposedly, ever since he was a small child, had been making up codes of his own all the time. So he might have been doing this since he was a kid. So he had some crazy key built into his head just over repetition, mm -hmm. which would make it even harder to crack because, well, the only person who knows the answer is now dead. Right. It is believed that they figured out the order of the notes because one of them does have P1 in the upper right-hand corner, mm -hmm. which for you and I would indicate page one. Mm -hmm. It might not be that. It might be something other in another piece of code that we don't realize. But people have been using that as the basis of this is page one, and this is how we're going to go ahead and try and figure out the cipher. And there were two pages, right? Two pages. That is correct. Like I said, the FBI had been trying to, to crack this for a long time and, and gave up. And I've got some quotes directly from them. Uh, this is actually from Dan Olson. He's the chief of the FBI's Cryptanalysis and Racketeering Records Unit. <laughs> uh, yeah, they what a cool job title. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But hard to get on a name tag. Yeah. Well, but, you know, it's, it's kind of weird they lumped them together. Cryptanalysis and racketeering what? Well, you know, the mob uses ciphers all the time. They use codes. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I know, but still, you know, I mean, cryptanalysis is kind of a thing. I mean, the, the FBI does a lot of counter-espionage, so, you, you know. You would think that they would be using cryptanalysis even more heavily for that kind of thing. True. But I, anyway, that's, just, that's irrelevant. That, that's anyway. an aside, but who Yeah, cares? anyway, who cares? Anyway. Uh, but here's what Dan so. Olson says. He says, and I quote, We're really good at what we do, but we could use some help on this one. Breaking this code could reveal the victim's whereabouts before his death and could lead to the solution of a homicide. 
Not every cipher we get arrives at our door under these circumstances. Even if we found out that he was writing a grocery list or a love letter, we would still want to see how the code is solved. This is a cipher system we know nothing about. Mm. Maybe someone with a fresh set of eyes might come up with a brilliant new idea. And let me repeat that line. This is a cipher system we know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's a brand new cipher to the FBI based on the way it's organized and, and put together. Mm. It could be, as one of you had said, he could be a bit of a savant when it came to codes. Yeah. Slow on everything else, but super great at puzzles. Right. Uh, yeah. is it, uh, I was hearing the other day that... People with Asperger's uh, and autism are typically the ones that are savants with math. They're mm -hmm. really good with those. So there are relations in the brain of, of chemistry and function. So Absolutely. it could be right along the same lines. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, I take it the FBI must have turned this stuff over to the NSA. I would I mean, imagine would that they went that they for did? a lot of inter uh, intergovernmental support you on would this think one. That they would take it to the NSA before they would put it on, on the, the internet. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's you know, been it twelve was, years. Yeah, I, I imagine that they went ahead and they they pursued every avenue uh, yeah. that was available to them. I don't imagine that they said, "Oh no, we're not talking to those guys. We don't like those." Ah, you know, you never know about the government. You know, sometimes they don't like they don't like each other. Uh, I feel like they like each other more than they like the public, though. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's that's, that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if if, if the if they sicked a bunch of crazy supercomputers on that thing and they weren't able to break it, then I don't know, man. It's hard to say. But then again, a supercomputer only knows how to follow a f formulas, whereas mm -hmm. you and I can look at something and make that leap of uh, not a leap of faith, but that leap of intuition, yeah, and yeah. suddenly it all falls into place, which computers aren't able to do at this. Point. I I have a strong feeling we're going to break it tonight, actually. From what I've gleaned from reading stuff from the FBI and all these other news reports, it appears to be what's known as a simple substitution cipher, mm -hmm. which, for those of you who don't know, is A is replaced with the letter B and B is replaced with the letter C or some variant of that. Yeah. Uh, it seems relatively basic from the outside, but there is some information based on posts that I've read of people who are trying to crack it that it could be a polygraphic substitution cipher. And from what I can understand, a polygraphic substitution cipher is where it is actually letter pairs are taken and they replace other letter pairs. So TH now becomes BD. But TR would become CQ, if you know where I'm going with this. So uh, they're, they're codes actually, are so complicated. It's in yeah. total sequence, two by two, and that adds uh, so much more variability because it's not 26 letters. It's all these letter pairings. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can throw uh -huh. numbers into the mix, which Ricky did. Yeah. So there's this huge number of possibilities. Or, again, as we said could be just something unique to him yeah. that only he understood. And it could also be that it's just gibberish. <laughs> it, it absolutely yeah. could. And that's where the speculation comes in, Joe. And that's that's good timing on your mm. part, is that the speculation is it's gibberish. It's this guy who was mentally unstable just writing garbage. Uh -huh. And it doesn't make sense to anybody because it didn't make sense to him in the state that he was when he wrote it. There is also speculation that it could be a note, a set of notes that he wrote at the time that he was with whoever killed him. So there's the possibility that cracking this code would shed light on how he died or why he died or who killed him, mm -hmm. basically helping solve the murder. Yeah. Sure. It seems unlikely because, frankly, I mean, if you're going to write a note knowing that you're probably about to die and you want to write a note incriminating Mr. X over here to your left, are you going to really put it in an unbreakable code or are you just going to write it in plain English? Well, I mean, if he'd been doing codes his whole life and this was his code, it likely seemed incredibly simple to him mm -hmm. that he would think, well, anybody could break this if they took the time mm -hmm. because I'm an idiot and I know how to do it. No, mm -hmm. absolutely. No, but, 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 but again, it's like, why do you put it in code at all? Well, because the other guy's watching. Mm. Or he just did that all the time. That's that may he, have yeah. been his yeah. automatic way to write. He may have just 
written down his grocery list. Yeah. He wrote his grocery list out. And somebody said, what the heck is it? What's my grocery list? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Can't you read that? Yeah. It just may have been second nature to him. Yeah. He said his English was bad, right? Mm -hmm. Then maybe that was... That yeah. was the way he compensated. Yeah. It might have been some crazy phonetic in his brain, like a phonetic system. Mm -hmm. I can pe If I piece these mm -hmm. things together, we don't know if maybe he was dyslexic, so maybe that's how he wrote things, but then he broke it into a code. There's mm -hmm. all these variables that simply not a clue exists to. Yeah. Not a single answer so far. Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up the note for you, or both the notes for you guys, so you can take a look at them. All right. Sure. So obviously, as you can tell when you're looking at them, it's it's very scribbled. It's, it is difficult to tell what's going on in there. It is, yeah. Did you, as you look at it, and I can pull up if we want, but I don't know if it'll help. I do have a version that has it typed out in the actual text is typed rather than handwritten, but it seems like... And I said this before, it seems almost phonetic. As you read it... It you... does a little bit. Like, I can kind of, like, my brain can make sense of little snippets of it. Yeah. But... Two, three letter at a time. Yeah. But the context, you can't put the whole thing together. And... Yeah, like, there's an if there. What appears to be a lose, an L. So, so it starts with an R. Um... Yeah, it's interesting. It's very... It, it, it seems so simple, but at the same... When you look at it, and I think the handwriting yeah. is what makes it deceptive that way is it seems like it's written in a child's handwriting. It should be easy to figure out until it hits you in the head with a rock and stumps you, which is exactly what it did to everybody. Yeah, but it's it's like down here it says like half something, please. P-L-S-E. Looks like a D-L-S-E to me. Oh, it looks yeah. like a P to me. See? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is hard. what makes this so difficult. And I, I mean, if we are staring at it and already beginning to argue after 30 seconds, imagine what these poor fools at the FBI were doing. E-W-M-4. X-D. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe the typed out version would be more helpful, but I, I don't think there's any chance of cracking this. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I think it might be gibberish. I think that it is going to be uncrackable because obviously the key went to went with Ricky to his grave. Mm -hmm. uh, it, as of today, the murder is still unsolved. We still don't know exactly what happened. That's yeah, it would be interesting. So uh, I, I take it the FBI probably did other investigations beyond this. He must have talked to his family and friends and found out who he was associating with. Yes. And, uh, and he did not associate with the best folks. Again, if he had a handicap of some kind or s some kind of mental issue, he may have just not thought about it and didn't realize that he was getting himself into a bad situation and somebody might have taken advantage of him. It's mm -hmm. it's difficult to say. Yeah, so my twist on this is that his murderer was like, yeah, you can write all the notes you want if you write in the <laughs> handwriting you use. Because <laughs> he knew that that would be the only person that... Yeah. And the guy's like, I'm going to write a, a hell letter for help. And he's like, yeah, fine. Go for <laughs> Do it, Do whatever you want, man. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Very well could have been it. I don't know. Yeah. Gosh. Well, my theory is that uh, he had all this encrypted stuff around. You know, some of these, some of his scumbag friends saw this and they just, uh, said, what? You know, and they're like, you know, why are you encrypting this stuff? And well, you know, it's like, this is like, you know, uh, directions on how to find this buried treasure, you know. That's like, you know, billions of dollars worth of gold bullion and, you know, and everything like that. So they tortured him until he, until he finally just, you know, even though it was gibberish, he finally said, okay, you know, you drive out here, 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 20 paces this way, 30 paces this way, and it's there. And they're like, great. And they kill him. And they dump the body in a cornfield. And, of course, you know, when they, when they get to the where the buried treasure is, well, the joke's on them. It, mm. Who knows? There's no answers. There no. is, however... A bit of follow-up mystery. Oh. Yeah, oh, cool. To this whole thing. And, okay. and we've encountered this on stories before. And let me give you some of this follow-up mystery or twists. Uh, four years before Ricky died, so this is 1995, the police found the body of an alleged prostitute who was shot to death in a house near where Ricky was found. On the same stretch of road not too far away. Sure. In 2001, road crews found the bodies of two nearly or two naked women 300 yards from where Ricky's body was found. Huh. It could be that there potentially could be some psychopath that's out there that's using that stretch of road to do their business 
and dump their their evidence or their bodies off of. And Ricky might this this may not have anything to do. Again, it might be just pure coincidence. Coincidence yeah. that this happened, or it might be a coincidence that he had these notes in his pocket and he just got caught up in something that somebody was doing that they had their own compulsion for. Mm. Uh, but it could also mean that he was identifying who his ki- who the killer was. He yeah. might have found out about it, and they came after him, and he wrote it down, and they couldn't figure it out was, and they let him go. Um, yeah. yeah. To, get, to get back to what I was saying, it's like you know everybody, including the FBI, thinks that what is in this message is something of supreme value, which is why they're devoting huge resources to it. So if you're one of Ricky's scumbag friends and, and you find this coded message, you're going to draw the same conclusion as the FBI. You're going to think there's something of supreme value in here. And you're going to torture Ricky until he tells you what is in the message. Now, if it's just gibberish, he'll just make something up. Well, <laughs> I mean, that, and that's, we, that could be what know, it is. We don't I mean, know what pure speculation. was. I mean, he could yeah. have been tortured. Yeah, I mean, he could have been suffocated. There's no, there's no way to know because of how the state of the body was. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to know. Yeah. I that's know. where it ends. Yeah. That's where the whole thing ends. So there have been no good attempts at this, huh? There is there are all kinds of sites and again, I've got the links to them and we'll be putting those up on the page. There are links to people who are trying to figure it out and and they're giving their theories and they're working it back and forth, but as of yet nothing that is even close to being possibly viable. And so Another story that another, we don't have an answer to. Another unsolved mystery. Yeah, and that's that's the thing about it is like you know it's like um, you don't really know that there is an answer to it. And yeah, there may yeah, never there, be. There may, but really, may never be. Yeah. Well, if you folks want to go ahead and you want to check out the links, you want to find these discussion boards and these places, or just take a look at the notes themselves, you're more than welcome to do that. All of those will be available on the website. That website is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. If you think that you have an idea of how to break the cipher and you feel like telling us instead of the FBI, well, you're more than welcome to do that. We promise to take credit for it. Uh You can send us an email at thinkingsidewayspodcast at gmail.com. And with that, we're going to get out of here, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.